as Remembrance Day draws close, stories of my own family come to mind. Stories of conflicts, stories that my Dutch family shared, my uh, family who found their home in Canada shared with me. It, this time of, in our world asks us to think about sacrifice in ways that we cannot imagine. I can share the heartbreak that my family shared with me about the loss of, well, just about everything. Their reality, how they functioned in the world, who they were, the challenges that they were met with. And the sheer will to survive, to try to find a way through a horrible, horrible time. My grandmother, Van Vliet, would repeat many words, and especially in her late days, she would say, please don't forget. Please don't forget the stories that I have shared with you. And I have to say, uh, I've tried not to forget. She would share with me that I should try to share with my children and my grandchildren the impacts of war. It's hard to find words that really uh, summarize um, such a traumatic event. The costs that were paid, cost to individuals and families com and communities, and the land herself. We truly do not want anyone to have to live through such a, an experience. But we are called to remember so that these things don't happen again. And we become a people who commit to peace. So on this Remembrance Day, we give thanks and we pray for the peacemakers and the pacifists, for those who served on the front lines and those who protected and protested and marched, for those who volunteered, for those who waited anxiously at home, for those who hoped that things would get better, and for those who could not stand by and wait. We give thanks for those who believe that the world could be a better place. We remember those who paid the ultimate sacrifice, surrendering their lives, trusting that others would carry the torch. We give thanks to those who were once enemies, who have become friends and allies, bringing peace out of chaos. Amen. If you're able, you can stand in body or in spirit and let us sing, O Canada. remain standing as you are able and let us watch a small video um, that highlights some of the people in this community past and present who have stood for Canada and for peace.
There are words that are spoken each year as we remember, and so we say together, they shall not, they shall not grow old as we are left to grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn them. At the going down of the sun in the morning, we will remember them. We will be remembered. Let us pray. We offer you, O oh God, our prayers for those who seek justice and resist evil. We pray for those who need your presence and strength and stand firm, for those who oppose the use of violence in any form in faithful response to the Prince of Peace. We pray for those who are prepared to be firm to protect others from danger. We pray for those who walk with others who need strength. We pray for those who protest, those who organize letter campaigns, those who give sacrificially on behalf of others. We pray for those who speak the unpopular truth, who protect the unpopular victims who choose the unpopular path of peace. We pray for those who do not let their desire for peace hinder the requirements of justice, and for those who do not let the zeal of justice override the call for peace. Amen. And now we're going to read our scripture passage this morning. So as you listen to these words that you probably have heard before, let us take this precious moment in our lives to sit and wonder about this ancient story. All right. Come closer to the microphone. One step. All right. This is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. Your, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, 
and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole long life. Silence, one moment. Let us pray. God of gratitude, hope, and peace, you who name us love as beloved children, we open our hearts to you and linger in words and images that have been given and received this day. May these gifts continue to stir us to peace. Amen. One of the photos that was shown today was of Don Walker, Ross's father, who was a pilot. He flew a saber jet, I can't even imagine, um, during the Cold War. Interesting that it was one of the photos that was hung in Don's room when he was living at the Summit, which is a a long-term residential uh, facility here in Victoria. Now, some of the folks who looked after Don would see the photo and they would point to him and say, Top Gun. Do you know that? uh, Do you remember that movie? Which we thought was really fun and kind of interesting. And what we noticed then is they remembered him as a younger man along with the man that they saw before him. And they were able to reflect with him about one chapter of his life. They experienced and they saw him maybe just for a glimmer of um, a younger man and saw that this was one part of a very long story of Don's life. Now, if I had one chance, one chance, and uh, you know how these things go, I would ask my father-in-law, this saint, how he made such a choice. How did he find the courage to climb into a jet plane? That would be my one question, if I could. So I wonder, who here remembers the movie Top Gun? Yeah, do you remember that movie? It's on Netflix, if you're looking for something to do. And I can't believe I'm going to say this, but it was originally, uh, it was created in 1986. And it had it all, I have to say, as a young woman. It had great music, it had motorbikes, it had airplanes, all the makings of a thrilling movie. At its heart, however, the characters of this movie came to know their purpose and their call in life, be it all from a very American perspective. At its heart, however, and sometimes you have to look deeper than others, Top Gun is an archetypal story. It is a a story that describes an essential life-giving aspect of inner faith. Yep, even in Hollywood, movies can speak amid sometimes, I admit, however, sometimes you have to look harder than others. The characters in this movie, they evolved. And much like our sacred story, characters in our story evolve. Every individual person of faith works through the process of what it means to sacrifice one's life as part of a process of spiritual growth and development. This approach of viewing characters on a journey is is not new, and I am actually pulling on um, some psychology from Jung. I put that in there so that you would all know that I'm smart. And uh, but it also echoes the life of mystics that are found in all traditions, including Sufi and Christian strands. And I'm adding that part in so you know I'm inclusive. There is an eternal truth. No matter how you slice it, which tradition you find yourself in, life requires you to make sacrifices. 
we sacrifice one experience for another so that we have um, we can figure out what has value and what to give priority to. We choose to sacrifice our time with our family our, for works of service or even golf. We choose to sacrifice some of our hard-earned money so that someone at our place can have an angel gift at Christmas so that they have one tiny slice of normal on their Christmas day. We choose to sacrifice some of our food so that others may eat and drink. Some of us in our culture, some of us during times and spaces when it's called upon, sacrifice our youth and our skills, our physical and our mental health to have your world, their world, turned completely upside down. Dreams interrupted to keep those who are at home safe. As Remembrance Day approaches, we often hear from those who, that folks have, people have sacrificed on behalf of people and our country. Sacrifice is a part of life for most of us. In our sacred story, we have stories of a God that requires us to do more than sacrifice, but to surrender. Surrender is to give over control of our life, and for most of us, that's pretty difficult. Many of us would prefer to sacrifice one thing of our choosing rather than having the choice be taken from us. Can I have an amen on that? Rather than handing over control of something, we are asked to hand over control of everything. Many of us would agree it's easy enough to come to some kind of decision that we have to let go of some of our attachments. Attachments like the love of spouse or safety or a view of ourselves or a preconceived idea of God and what our relationship with God is. Sometimes these things need to be released. But our sacred story shares with us that Jesus called the disciples to a life of surrender, giving over control of everything. They gave up their livelihoods, their relationships. They were asked to surrender their preconceived ideas on how life should work and who's really in control. And they were at, and Jesus asked those first disciples to actively choose to follow going where Jesus went to the edges of the margins to serve and love others. No wonder they had such difficulty with this message. Jesus was sharing a glimmer of living water. Now surrender is hands up, arms of war down, cease fire, allowing humanitarian aid for peace for all of us. Reconciliation looks like retribution, which is not charity, which is walking with for all our sakes. It's done out of mercy and love. In the end, Jesus shared with us that surrender looks like laying down his life. Jesus died, yes, he was murdered, but by his readiness to let go of what was most precious to him, his life, he surrendered the call to us. We are called to change the world with our hands and our hearts. And through our surrender, we are changed. Each time we surrender and offer up our fantasy of control over our life, we loosen our grip on what is most precious to us. We grow toward a union with the Holy One. On All Saints Day, we are called to remember the saints that have walked in our life, walked this path before, grandparents and mothers, fathers and brothers and sisters who have surrendered their life in service of the other. They encourage us from behind the veil, which seems so, so close at this time of the year 
to walk the walk. Our daily faith, our time, our place, this message is clear here. This is hard work and it takes great courage. In our discomfort, we are comforted by our community, our sacred texts, and a God that leads you by still waters. And when Ivan read that scripture, could you not feel the God that comes present? The cry of one who would choose to surrender their life rather and follow, knowing comfort and peace. Our scripture says, God leads me in the right paths for God's name's sake. And you, God, prepare a table before me and my cup overflows. The psalm provides the language that speaks to our deepest fears on this journey of faith. And for people of faith, it brings hope and the presence of peace. Now, I've been told, but I cannot confirm, that a putter is an essential club for golfers. I know for sure a chef's knife is essential, an essential tool for cooks. And the words of the psalm are essential text for, the, for a life of faith. I don't know this for sure, but I think you can golf without a putter. Ross can confirm this with you later. I know I can cook without my chef's knife. I can try. But I can assure you that the peace that I see that the Psalm 23 brings to people of faith surpasses all understanding. This is ancient wisdom that reaches beyond the veil and calls us to peace. It is the promise of an ancient tradition that says, take courage, I am with you. In response, the psalmist confess, I fear no evil. If we could all get to that place, maybe we need to practice saying those words so that we can move our hearts and minds to truly believe that God, you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. And so as we surrender ourselves in communion with tables and conversation like next week, soul project gathering with laughter and food and drink, we will be in the presence of the Holy One who will call us forward as we grow in a sense of connection and communion with all of God's creation. We will practice what it means to give from our abundance until it feels so completely natural. We will be able to surrender what we have and in return receive living water and peace. Amen. to
with your peace. You are Lord, O oh Lord, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Alleluia. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You are Lord, O oh Lord, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. your peace.